Hey, welcome to the channel where we show you how to put some prep in your step. Today, I want to talk about documentation throughout your flow and using that to not only help anyone else who might be interacting with the flow or somebody, maybe a, a different analyst who might be trying to understand what is the end result of this flow, um, but also helping throughout your validation process. So that way the stakeholders understand where the data is being sourced from, how it's being interacted with, uh, how we're getting all of the fields into there and what our end, end result looks like. This is something that I use in my validation process throughout work. We really try to walk through with our end users uh, so they, they understand the data set in general so they can understand what questions we're trying to answer with the data set and what all is gonna be available in the dashboard. So let's dive into it. Okay, so here I've connected to the Superstore flow that is available to you when you download prep. And it's just a sample flow similar to the sample Superstore data set that kind of helps you understand what you can do in Tableau Desktop. This flow helps you understand what you can do in Tableau Prep. And we can use this for an example for what a fully documented flow would look like. Um, but at the same time, this is just the way that I do it and that my organization does it. it. doesn't mean it's the correct way or the only way. It's just what's gonna work best for you and your organization. Because we're utilizing prep flows heavily, um, this is part of our validation process. And if it's not the same for your organization, maybe this isn't useful to you. Um, but it can still be useful to other analysts who may be inheriting this flow at a later point. Um, you wanna make sure uh, that whatever data sources that you're creating, especially if they're gonna be behind uh, critical dashboards, uh, that in the event that you decide that you know, you're gonna move on from that company, that somebody else inheriting that can really easily understand what the purpose of the flow is. So uh, most of the time what you'll see is these just real quick names of the steps, you know, remove flow, remove nulls, fix data type. That's easy for somebody who uses prep to understand, right? Um, but what you wanna keep in mind is what you see here in this profile or in this pane is exactly what you see whenever you publish your flow. So we can see, I've got this published to my Tableau online and you see exactly the way that it's reflected here. Um, you can add descriptions as well as the name to each of these steps. So if I double click here, it gives me the option to change the name of the, the step, but I can also add a description and I can use 200 characters for that description. So in my input step, I can see that this is a wildcard union with these four files and a wildcard union would typically be used if there's going to be additional files added to this in the future. So whenever 2019 rolls around, 2020, uh, those are going to ideally pop into this, this input step. So what I can say is data source is a union of all files with the name structure say orders south and let me do just a bracket year curly brace dot csv and then i can also say this is refreshed annually so now somebody looking at the flow can see okay that's exactly what this data source is i don't have to actually go in here to see it it's right there it's a data source it's a union of those files and it's going to refresh once a year or new files will be added to it once a year that makes sense now this step, it says it's removing nulls. Okay, but what nulls is it removing? And here's another thing. You can actually add a description to each of the changes within each step. So here I've added this description where you right click and say edit description. And so I can see that this is excluding null order IDs. So I've just added the description here, filter rows with a null order ID out of the flow, okay? So that makes sense. So really extensive documentation for each step and then each change within each step. And so I can even call that out here. So what is this step doing? This is filtering out any rows with a null order ID field. Okay. And again, the reason why I'm calling the description out here and in the flow is because in my validation process, we document out 
each of those changes so that way we can help our end users understand here's how it, if the data is being manipulated in any way here's how it's been being manipulated and we can get to a point where we say do you agree with this and all of the changes that are being made to it as as far as what's going to be giving us the most accurate output um, so here we've filtered out any rows with a null order id so let me see this one this one's just an orders east table so again i can say data source is the orders east file and let's just say it refreshes annually at well refreshed annually okay and i'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing uh here as well so we'll say orders west oops orders west dot csv The orders west CSV refreshes annually. And central. Let me just make sure. Yep. So I can say data source is the orders central CSV file refreshes annually. Okay. Now, what's this step doing? So this step is fixing a data type. So changing type from of discount to string. Uh, what was the original type? Most likely number. So I can add a description here. Change type from number to string. Or I can even simplify that since it's already kind of self-explanatory and just say, uh, let's say original type number. And this one is removing letters, and this one actually, let's see, removes letters from all values. Okay, and what letters is it removing exactly? Uh, so it's removing this letters from sales. Okay, so any letter, letter character, it's removing from our sales column. And I think it's already doing a good job of, of explaining that, so I don't need to add any further description. Um, this is saying it's changing sales to a decimal number. Well, what was the file or the type originally? Let me just, so originally it was a string. Okay, so I can add, add here another description. Original type, string. And again, it's, it's really just to be able to tie back to see, well, why am I changing that to, to a, a decimal number? Uh, again, I can call this out. It says fixed data type, so I can say in the description, um, let's say fields changed, discount, discount and sales. And let me just add a little bit more context. So data types changed to reflect there we go okay rename states what's going on here so it looks like a couple of the state values were grouped um, let's see okay so this column initially contained the state name or the state abbreviation so it looks like those values have just been grouped together to just give us the name. So here I can say grouping abbreviations and full names together. And for the step itself, I can say um, state abbreviations and full names are grouped together to return only full names okay and fixed dates again let's see what this one is doing so this one's doing a lot more there's a lot more changes here um, so it looks like we're just adding a region column to this since it's the central region 
So let me add a description there and say, adding a region column to the flow to match the file structure. Here, so again, I can keep going through this and documenting it out, but you, you start seeing the idea. The idea is to really help someone who may not be using prep on an everyday basis understand what is happening each change why we're changing it and how we're getting to our end result and so now when i go and i publish this let me just publish this real quick and say i want to publish it to my prep flows folder and okay so let me publish do 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 and so now you know you can see in my published version even somebody who, even though I'm the owner, if there was another analyst who I've given access to this file, if they come in and look at it, this is what they're going to be able to see. So they don't actually have to go in to try and edit the flow and maybe potentially mess something up or even try to download it first to validate what's going on. I've described that out here for them. And then in my more extensive validation process, that's where we'll go in and edit the flow and start seeing all of the documented changes and walk through with our stakeholders on that so they can really understand how we're getting to those, those end results, those end values. Um, so this is just one way, as I said, that you could use the documentation and that description field for, for me, it's, it's also, if I'm working on a flow, other priorities come up and I have to kind of put it in it back in the backlog for maybe a week, maybe two weeks. Um, and then I go back to it. I can really just quickly get back to where I was and why there's sometimes you'll look at a change or a calculation and be like, why did I, why did I do that? And so just documenting it out as you're going through it makes it a lot more, a lot easier. I've gotten some, you know, pretty large and extensive flows where when I first started out, I wasn't really documenting them. So I go to clean step 23 and I'm asking myself, what is clean step 23 and how did I get there? And then I have to go back through each step to understand how I got to that point. So if you start out and just make it habit to document each change that you're doing, why you're doing it, even if you have to go back and change it, it can just really make the flow more organized and it can also maybe help you reduce um, other steps. And you know, maybe you were gonna add three steps here, but because of the way you've documented it out, you understand that you don't need to add those three steps. You can ju actually just do it in the one step. Um, so just one way to utilize those fields and utilize the description within the, the each of the changes themselves. Um, if that's useful to you, you know, let me know, uh, give me some feedback, some comments. If there's other use cases, other things you'd like to see, um, let me know. And I hope to see you in the next one.